I'ma crush it. Welcome to Unsung, Pittsburgh's premier nonprofit news magazine show. I'm back, your host Anthony Walker. Now we've all recovered from Day of Giving, and now we're visiting the other sensation that is sweeping our city, the giant rubber ducky. Fun fact about the duck is that each city builds its own duck from the plans of the Dutch artist Hoffman. And the whole project includes massive pontoons, crews to inflate and deflate the duck, and in this case, because the Ohio is such a busy waterway, alerting such organizations as the Coast Guard and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Now, the artist Hoffman has said that the duck has healing properties because it knows no frontiers and doesn't discriminate and doesn't have political connotation. The duck has been here for about four weeks now and is planning on flying out of town Sunday. The holidays are coming and there is no use ducking them. So on song heads the Northside Food Pantry for a tour. We also broke new ground for Geron X Grayson Community Center. But first, let's check in with the area nonprofits. Let's get quacking. Day of giving was all it's quacked up to be. Over 18,000 donors, a record for the 24-hour giving event, made contributions during the Pittsburgh Foundation's Day of Giving last week. The total raised for charitable organizations in Allegheny and Westmoreland counties was $7,719,000. Credit card charitable gifts were received from a total of 18,194 individual donations during the event on October 3rd up from the 17,719 contributions in 2012. A total of 719 local nonprofits received donations of the 729 organizations that participated in the event, having completed or updated profiles on the Foundation's Pittsburgh Gives online site. Since the launch of Pittsburgh Gives in 2009, the online site's giving events have so far raised more than $28 million dollars for the region's nonprofit organizations. Congrats to my ear, Garamella, an eighth grader at Dorseyville Middle School in Fox Chapel. He won first place in engineering at the Broadcom Masters, which stands for Math, Applied Science, Technology, and Engineering for Rising Stars, a prestigious national competition for middle school students. My ear and Emma Ashley Burnett, a seventh grader at the Ellis School in the Shady Side section of Pittsburgh, were among the competitions. 30 finalists. As finalists, they received an all-expenses-paid trip to Washington, D.C., presented their projects as part of a four-day science fair, and then toured the White House with President Barack Obama. The holidays can be a stressful time for anyone. For food pantries, it is a time of increased demand, and they need your help to increase the supply. Unsung is pleased to bring you a great opportunity to get involved with. You are at Northside Common Ministries the Community Food Pantry. What it is is a uh, service uh, where we provide groceries to families that reside on the north side. It's pretty much food that we uh, focus on. Um, but we do uh, have other uh, services here in Northside Common Ministries from GED programs. We have a men's shelter upstairs and we have um, other, uh, like a, a cat program to also uh, uh, help the you know public. The types of food we get in are uh, you know non perishables, and sometimes we also have uh, fresh produce brought in to us from uh, you know other local businesses. We're, we struggle to give them healthy food, and uh, some of the good stuff we've got is like the shelf stable milk, the milk that's in the, the UTH boxes. That's those are that's good. And uh, we usually have peanut butter for a while when there were the recalls, we couldn't even get peanut butter. Yeah, we have volunteers that, uh, that come in. Um, it, it varies from day to day how many people volunteer because it is volunteer based. There's only one paid individual and everyone else here is a volunteer. And um, if you go around and count, it's about 12 people that we need on site to help, help our day move smoothly. I've worked hard all my life, but still I found myself working a job that I loved, but it wasn't full time. So I got a second job, and between the two of them it still wasn't 40 hours. But rent, utilities, food, all of that were still full time expenses, and it's the only relief there is. It helps so that you can eat, you can, you can pay the electric bill and still eat. 
when things were going very well, you can get overtime in the garden business in the spring. There, first of all, I didn't have the time to come, but I didn't need to. If I don't need to, I want to leave it for other people who do need it. But it's wonderful to know that it's here. I had a woman who came in and was crying, and she was a grandmother taking care of a bunch of grandchildren, just like a lot of a lot of people that I have. And and what her autistic grandson had left the freezer open, and all of her food was gone. She was ruined. And at the end of the day, it hadn't been as busy as what we thought, and I had, we had a lot of produce left over and, and stuff. So, and she just lives down the street. So I loaded up on my bike and, and took it all to her house. And and while we were there, she wanted to show me her garden and what, what all she was doing. And as she took me to the garden, we go by this big metal bakery shelf with 300 cans of, of food on it. And so my first thought is, oh, what do you mean you don't have anything to feed these kids? You have 300 cans of food here. And I, know, but I, just, I didn't say anything. I'm still trying, you know, work it out. Don't, you, don't, you don't know what's going on in their lives. And then I got then I got done and got out of there and I got thinking about that. That's her 401k. That's everything. That's all that she has. There's 300 cans. There's nothing else. She's, oh, she's already in subsidized housing. She's already, every, she's, she's taking advantage of every part of the safety net possible. And if that doesn't make her feel secure, wonder why not, this is what she's got. She's got her little tiny Armageddon set of foods that'll get her another three or four weeks. If everything else falls apart, that's what she has. It's just during the holidays we see over a thousand individuals and with some of the other pantries closing, the, uh, the burden has increased on us as a, uh, as a business. So uh, we were not able to purchase and all the food uh, that we need to have on our shelves for our clients. So we, we, we are making a call for, uh, for anyone to host a, a food drive for us and for uh, anyone to come in Monday through Friday and help us serve our clients um, in an effective and efficient manner. The center that cares broke ground on the Geron X Grayson Community Center, formerly the Ozenum Cultural Center, Thursday, October 17th in the Hill District. Unsung was there to see how an unexpectedly short life gives hope to the community. We're here to break ground on the Geron Xavier Grayson Community Center. Uh, it's a bittersweet day. Three years ago today, he lost his life to gun violence. But our family decided in the community and as well as the center that cares to turn a uh, bad situation into good. Um, we are here to celebrate his life and to bring uh, a safe haven to the Hill District community. Just understand that this building will give light and maybe save another life um, of somebody is, uh, is a big reward. You take a tragedy that could have destroyed a family, could have destroyed a community, and you build something fantastic from it that's going to help countless kids. The Center of Kids have been around for 14 years. Uh, we've probably reached over 3,000 young people and with the center being open and renovated we hope for years to come that generations of young people will come through this building as a community center and lives will be strengthened and transformed and changed. Where we have been taking kids from K through college, um, providing cultural tours, academic help, enrichment and things of that nature. This place closed of Ozenham in, in 2002 but in the day of Ozenham it was known for the Ozenham strings. It trained people in violin and musical instruments. It also was, uh, had a renowned basketball league throughout for years and we hope to return some of that of music and arts and culture and exposure and basketball and football and baseball and just keeping our kids engaged and exposed in positive uh, direction and alternatives. There's really nowhere for these kids to go. Um, you can belong to the Y, which is great, and we that's why everything that's going to be in here it will be a complement of the Y, but not a competition. Um, so that's why there's no pool or things like that. But um, this will provide a, um, the resources here through computer and learning and um, the programs that will be available here. Um, a building that has been closed for you know such a long time um, is really going to bring a rejuvenate, I believe, the community in a whole other way. We hope to have smart boards and flat screen TVs and help teach them to 
you know, how to repair computers, how to fix computers, how to work on computers, how to, how to, to be the most as computer literate as possible, uh, that they can pass all the exams and be Pittsburgh Promise ready and just get these kids to the next level. To be a, a facility that's open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. We don't want to just open when the kids get out of school, uh, so we hope to have different programs during the day just to be um, beneficial to the Hill District, whatever they may need. We've been part of this community since we arrived here 17 years ago, and we could not do this without the praise and support of the community and the Grayson family. You take a, a center that had been the center of a neighborhood for decades, but remained vacant for nearly 20 years, and you bring new life to it. There are so many good things around this, and the potential to see this type of development really change the Hill District is real. We're fortunate to have a grant from a PACE to do assessment or sustainability. So we know it's going to take about $100,000 a year to keep this building uh, moving and going. Uh, uh, Mark Turner and CYF has been good partners with the number of kids we serve. We have about 125 kids already in our K through fifth grade program. We have another large group of kids, about 70, 80 kids with a collaborative with 21st Century Grant. So we hope to even take on now the high school kids that they might be strengthened and uh, that the building is so attractive that they run here after school. The building renovations cost $1.7 million. We need about $500,000 to close the gap and to get this building open as soon as possible. So if you are willing to make any donations, all donations are needed, uh, please contact the center that cares and uh, we will put you in the right place to help donate. Uh, we are thankful for all of our sponsors who have helped so far, such as the Pittsburgh Foundation, and we just look forward to collaborating in the future. We're online at the Center That Cares, uh, www.centerthatcares. You can call us at the church at 621-9612. We still need your support. This is a major undertaking. We've raised about $1.2 million, probably got another six, dollars $700,000 to raise, and we need more support from the community. Uh, the foundation community has been wonderful to the center that cares, um, a couple corporations, and now we need the community to pitch in, whether it's a dollar or a hundred thousand dollars, we need your help. Bricolage presents War of the Worlds, the second episode of Midnight Radio Season 5, beginning Thursday, October 24th through Saturday, November 9th. Additionally, a special performance will be broadcast live on 90.5 WESA on the 75th anniversary of the original broadcast on October 30th. Each performance starts at 9, featuring the musical guest, the Ortner Roberts Trio. More information is available at webbricolage.org. And Halloween isn't just for kids. Join the Carnegie Library, Allegheny Branch at 1230 Federal Street, if you dare, for a night of spooky fun with food, prizes, and amazing array of performers and entertainers. October 31st from 6 to 8 p.m. Details are available at the address on your screen. You might have recognized story tags and Twitter handles during our stories. We invite you to continue the conversation by tagging the nonprofit or using the story tag on Twitter. You can also get in touch with us on Twitter at PGH on video or hashtag unsung PGH. Check out our previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on pittsburghonvideo.org, as well as the audio and video versions on iTunes and YouTube. You got a nonprofit you think is cool? Let us know why, and you might end up here on Unsung. Email Christopher at whitlatchc at pghfdn.org. As always, thank you for watching Unsung, and be sure to share it with your friends. I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. Quack, quack, quack. So I said I'ma crush it. Call me the golden boy cause it shine whenever I touch it. Don't rush it, the flow comes naturally. Actually, the whole hood after me. Masterpiece, I outran a pace car. Any